take three. It's a response to John All in the chat comments of the live stream of the Hoax Wars Monday Night Live Hoax Wars regarding simulation argument. Um, I do not believe that it is necessary to know whether or not we live in a simulation. I do not think that it matters. Um, however, there are certain principles of the nature of reality that we may yet discover, um, some of which are hypothesized, maybe even theorized, um, that suggests that our universe is uh, holographic in nature, that we are in fact a two-dimensional film of a bubble expanding that has a holographic experience of a three-dimensional cosmos. Um, the thing with this is uh, linked to a uh, recent uh, PBS space-time segment, I believe it was their, their most recent one, about um, the information capacity of the universe. Um, theirs is going into some black hole theory, but at the same time, they mentioned the possibility of using a uh, an event horizon as the computation medium. So the, uh, the processor of, of a computer capable of simulating the entire cosmos mathematically correctly uh, would occupy uh, the surface of an event horizon. I raised the question personally uh, whether or not such a thing could, uh, you know, inside the event horizon as things are, are a bit different, is it possible that there is a, um, the universe that is being simulated actually is existing inside of that event horizon, and is that ethical? Um, but I'm not sure that we could ever discern for sure. I don't think that there's uh, any real meaningful way that we could do that. Um, due to the nature of it being a simulation and we being a part of it. However, that said, there are things that the universe does that uh, appear to be computational. That was spoken of in the Neil deGrasse Tyson hosted uh, simulation argument panel. Um, some of the scientists that were present that were not sure whether it implied a simulated universe, but if it's holographic and also computational, that does not necessarily follow that it must be a simulation. Um, and, of course, that since we may never be able to tell for sure because of the nature of the thing, that it may not actually matter. That's kind of where I sit with it. Um, certainly it acts like it sometimes, or maybe we are just able to glitch the universe uh, or, you know, uh, to, to exploit certain certain plateaus, islands of stability, etc. in such a way to um, you know, f uh, hack, for lack of a better term, uh, what can be done. I know that there's a, what I call physics tricks when I do newspapers, and, uh, you know, there's lots of other, um, you know, especially when it comes to conservation of momentum and such, that there's, you know, orbital resonances and some pretty wild stuff that physics can do in the, the realm of gravity. Um, you know, I don't know if it's simulated. I don't know that the, the whack but awesome nature of the universe is necessarily an indication that it is a simulation. It just means that the cosmos uh, is computational in nature, that it's its own. Uh, they said that, like, the chromodynamic level there was, um, and also in DNA. Um, but at the, at the chromodynamic level between quarks and gluons, um, the equations that are necessary to describe the motions that they have observed thus far uh, appear to indicate there is some sort of um, error correction algorithm within the motion of these particles uh, to do with the strength of the strong force. Um, and, you know, of course, that is where the this tiny force that holds together uh, quarks into protons and neutrons and such, um, that the, the farther apart they get, the stronger the force is. So they can really only get so far apart. And then also there is a, a limitation to how close together they can be squeezed. But that is why the fundamental size is the size that it is. Is that, you know that's where that is. So um, you know there's a lot of really crazy stuff that you know definitely resembles the the computational universe and things that could could suggest uh, you know that yeah you know a, a simulation would definitely include those things yes but I don't think it is required that those things existing means that there is a simulation. Um, however. Um, like I said, sometimes it feels different. So, you know, it, it could, could it be both? The universe has got this quantum thing with the observation. 
If we're incapable of discerning, then we are incapable of observing directly, which means that we wouldn't violate its uh, uncertainty principle or whatever by wondering, but we could never prove it. So, you know, it, it could be that. It could be a, a superposition of either, neither, and both until such a time as we're able to tell. And if we can't observe, then we aren't the ones meant to observe. We are the cats in the box. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that's, you know, I suppose it's certainly possible. Um, there was another thing. It totally directly relates to this. Um... From a spiritual angle, from the transcendental, and from a lot of the esoteric, from other people having their own transcendental experiences, there seems to be like an ordered, fractal, you know, over pattern that exists at various levels, and you can observe it, and it's made of things that are of the same pattern and, you know, self-similar, which of course is also holographic, that's what holographic means. So, like, to say holographic fractal is actually, like, a, a um, an excessive double use of the word. I can't, um, double positive, maybe? A, hol a hologram is a fractal. A fractal is a hologram. That's it's just what we consider a hologram is, like, an, a laser engraving within glass that has a holographic imprint. But a hologram is simply a self-similar pattern. Um, so anyways, the gist of this being that the universe is self-similar holographic, we have in our own consciousness self-similar ergo holographic um, echoes, repercussions, uh, copies, whatever, of some of the patterns of the universe. You know, we, we see this in the golden spiral and everything, and the fact that we notice this pattern and consider it a, a thing that exists means that it exists within us. Um, so... Again, it comes, uh, well, it was probably in the first take that I mentioned this. Um, sometimes I think that a lot of what um, the really, what you might consider esoteric parts of physics, um, this, the highly theoretical science based on extremely tiny amounts of uh, theoretical test experiment data, um, talking about quarks and gluons, things that we could never image directly, so we just have to theorize um, for, you know, bringing it back to that chromodynamic uh, mentioned from the, the simulation argument uh, panel discussion. So, you know, the, we have a lot of this computational, self-similar, holographic universe principle, but again, it does not necessarily follow that it must be a simulation. Uh, it's possible that our cosmos is just the inside of a... Samira, you are going to spill my coffee and break my CD. You are an attention hog. Samira argument. Come on. Come on. So, basically, what I'm trying to get at, so I can wrap this up, is our universe exhibits a great number of traits that seem to be computational or holographic, if not simulated, but it does not necessarily follow that it must be simulated in order for it to exist the way it does. Um, we have not found explanation that says that it must be simulated. However, um, in the context of the event horizon uh, simulating a universe on its surface and whether or not that universe exists within that event horizon, um, yeah, it's possible that our own universe is simply the same, that the cosmic particle horizon is an event horizon within which a holographic universe seems to exist as the surface of the event horizon is the area that retains all of the information that does not get destroyed if information is destroyed because Hawking radiation, right? It's a really esoteric and a theoretical thing. So, again, I'm not sure we could ever tell. I'm not sure that it matters. I'm not sure that if there is a superposition of states that we are even capable of, of being aware of the, the experiment like that if that was the case. So it's moot. Uh, we should do what we're supposed to do then on that level, um, which is to simply exist, and however we react is how we react, right? Um, but the... The need for it to be a simulation is not necessarily there either for any of the other aspects of a seemingly simulated universe to function. So 
if it was the matrix and we should be able to do matrixy stuff, it has to be justifiable based on our own self-similar relationship to the cosmos. That's what I was getting at with the spirituality before the cat jumped up on everything. So anyways, I hope that's been uh, informative and not too rambly. Um, hopefully there's some decent auto captions on this that aren't too incomprehensible. So anyways, I'm going to let that go. Um, yeah.